the day. We're working on planches. Single most important thing to get in the planches, drinking chocolate milk. Alright, so the first two progressions to a planche. First one, you can do a frog stand. Um, typically they have bent arms and the knees, your legs rest on your elbows. They look like this. Right here. Second progression after that is an advanced frog stand where the arms are actually straight and the knee rests on the back of the elbow. It looks like this. Typically, I just go ahead and start people out on tuck planches. Um, most people already have the strength to start trying tuck planches, and if they don't, they usually gain the strength fairly quickly. And I also don't really think that frog stands transfer over very well to planches, so that's just me, but I don't really teach frog stands that much. Alright, tuck planche. Just like we talked about in handstand presses, where you can take your hands and lift them over your head by pressing with your shoulders. We're going to do this, that same type of motion in our tuck planche. So we start here. You're going to have your hands about right next to your knees, right on the outside, arms straight, and you're going to try to lift just like you do when you lift your hands over your head. Ground's in the way again, so your hands don't go anywhere, and instead your body lifts behind you. So whenever you press, this is what happens. You lift into your tuck planche. Now, depending on your strength, some of you, when you start your tuck planche, some of you are just going to be able to do this. You're barely going to be able to, be able to get off the ground. Uh, some of you might not be able to get up at all. You might try to lift and fall back down. That's all right. You just got to keep trying it over and over and over until you build the strength. Well, ideally, what you want your tuck planche to look like, you want to be able to lift up to about here. And then after you get your tuck planche, like after your tuck planche is solid, you can start trying to do a more advanced tuck planche where you actually flatten your back out instead of having it rounded. So that looks like this. Here's your normal one. Here's your flat back. Probably the hardest part of working planches is going to be going from not being able to do a planche at all to getting a solid tuck planche and then going from having a solid tuck planche to working on your straddle planches. So for people who don't have the strength to do a tuck planche or even for people who do have the strength to do it but want to make it better so that you can progress quicker, this is an exercise that can help you build up your shoulder strength to improve your planches. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to put your feet flat against the wall. Uh, at first, you can put your arms a little more directly under your shoulders like this. It'll be easier to hold. So you can be like here, maybe even further out if you need more, if you need, uh, more leverage. So you can even start all the way out here. Um, eventually, what you want to be able to do is keep moving your arms back and back and back. So maybe eventually we'll be all the way back here. So we go up against the wall. And then we're actually leaning forward. Our shoulders actually push forward and that takes away our leverage and puts more stress on our shoulders. Basically, you're putting yourself in a planche position, but you have your feet against the wall to assist you. So this is gonna help you build up your shoulder strength to improve your planches. Doing this exercise isn't gonna give you a planche, but it will help you make your planches stronger. And it's definitely gonna help with the tuck planche whenever you're first starting, first trying to build up that strength. And it'll probably help a little bit as you move into your straddle planches as well. All right, now we're going to do the straddle planches, and this is where it's going to really help you to have a solid handstand because we're going to do negatives from the handstand to get into the planche. All right, so in our handstand presses and in our tuck planche, we use our shoulders to press like this. In our negatives, we're going to do the same thing, but backwards. We're going to do the opposite of that. We're going to start from here, and we're going to lower ourselves like this. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to have to go into a straddle handstand. So kick up to your straddle handstand. And then you're going to go into the planche, not by bringing your feet down. Don't try to bring your feet down. Instead, push your shoulders forward. As your shoulders push forward, your feet will lower until you're in a planche like this. Now, whenever you first start, obviously you're not going to be able to negative all the way down into a straddle planche like I just did. What's probably going to happen when you first start, you're going to do a whole lot of this handstand. You're going to start to negative, and then you're going to collapse. That's all right. Um, that's what we want to do. We want to go into our handstand and we want to negative down as far as we can go. Eventually you're going to collapse. And over time, as you keep doing them over and over again, um, you're going to be able to go lower and lower and lower 
and then eventually, after a lot of hard work, you're going to be able to negative all the way down to the, into the straddle planche. Now, mistakes that people make, just like I said, uh, when I first did the, the planche, people try to bring their legs down and they just fall over. You can't, you can't just bring your legs down. From the handstand, you have to shift your shoulders forward. Like, shift all your weight forward on your shoulders. Now, as you shift it forward, you're going to feel the point that's natural to keep it there. If you shift too far forward, you'll fall over. Um, if you don't shift them forward, you'll just fall backwards. Right. The reason we have to shift our shoulders forward is because it's not a balancing skill. A planche is a strength skill. So our upper body, as we shift our shoulders forward, our upper body is going to counterbalance our lower body. That way, the only thing we're actually focusing on is using our shoulder strength to keep our body off of the ground. The second mistake that people will make is that they'll do this. They'll go into your planche and they'll start to lower and they'll think that, oh, I'll just bend my arms and that makes it easy. Don't bend your arms, keep them straight. If you bend your arms, just like before, you're cheating yourself on being as strong as you can possibly be. Training things with bent arms doesn't really transfer over to straight arm strength very much, but if you can do it with straight arms, then bent arms is easy. Doing planches with bent arms just makes you look strong to people who don't know what a planche is. If you really wanna be the strongest that you can be, you have to keep your arms straight. Don't cheat yourself on that. One more mistake people make, is that they try to bend at the hips. So uh, they try to go, as you're going down, they'll try to do this. You don't want any bend in your hips or any arch in your back. You want to be flat in your planche. So you can lower all the way down and be completely flat and horizontal to the ground. Ideally, what we want our uh, straddle planche to look like, we want, we want to lower all the way down here. We want our body parallel to the ground, nice and parallel. Pointed toes, stay really flat. Completely straight arms. Um, also, the wider your straddle is, the easier it's gonna be, just like with the handstand presses, and that's because it's gonna give you more leverage. So if you're really flexible, then this is gonna be easier for you than someone who's not as flexible. And uh, I'm sure some people are gonna ask uh, how to put your hands and your planche. Um, it doesn't matter how you put your hands. You can put them forwards like this, you can put them sideways. I think some people even turn them backwards. Um, I keep mine straight forwards like this. So once your straddle planche is feeling pretty easy and it doesn't feel like much of a challenge to you anymore, we're gonna start doing straddle planche push-ups. So we're gonna go into our straddle planche, and then we're gonna do push-ups in it. In your straddle planche push-ups, you wanna keep relatively good form in, straddle, in your straddle planche. Um, ideally, you want perfect form in your straddle planche. So you want to stay parallel to the ground. Um, you don't want to be lifting up like this with your feet, and like you don't want to be doing handstand push-ups. You want to stay flat, so you're in the straddle planche. Um, you don't want a lot of bend in your hips or anything. You really want to just stay flat and stay in that perfect straddle planche. When you dip into the push-up, your body should still be flat and straight. When you push back up, you should be in an actual straddle planche. I'm going to try to really exaggerate the straddle planche push-ups so that you can see the form on them. So we're gonna go into our straddle planche. Get straight, push up, back to straddle planche. Push up, back to your straddle planche. Push up, back to your straddle planche. <laughs> we're gonna do that over and over. After your straddle planche push-ups become pretty easy for you, I say after you can do maybe five to ten with good form, then we can start moving on to the next progression. Um, I usually work the next planche progression with the previous push-up progression. So whenever, whenever I was working my full planche, I was also doing straddle planche push-ups. All right, next progression is gonna be a full planche. Um, we're gonna work it exactly like we did straddle planche. Everything's gonna be exactly the same. The only difference is your legs are gonna be together, so you're gonna have less leverage, which is gonna make this exponentially harder. You have to shift your shoulders even more forward because your legs are together now, you're not straddled anymore. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it, so let's do one. All right, now that I'm full on chocolate milk and tired from all these other progressions, let's hope I can still do a good full planche. It's gonna be just like our straddle planche negative, except now our legs are together for the full planche. So we're gonna kick up into our handstand, feet together, shift our shoulders forward, And 
and that's our full planche. All right, so as you can see, it's just like the straddle planche. Go into your handstand, shift your shoulders forward, lower all the way down, body straight, feet together, arms straight, lower all the way down so you're parallel to the ground and flat. Um, that's pretty much all there is to. That's pretty much all there is to it. Mine probably could be better, but uh, that's the best that I could get it right now. So um, after your full planche, uh, once full planches are getting easy for you, once they're getting consistent, you can start working full planche push-ups. Um, you're gonna work it the same way you did straddle planche push-ups. I'm not gonna show full planche push-ups today because I've only recently started working them myself, and I don't feel that they're strong enough to use for a tutorial type guide thing yet. As you start doing your straddle planches and your full planches, uh, because you're shifting so much weight forward, you're shifting all your weight forward like this, you might start to feel strain in your wrist. If you go back and watch my full planche, you'll probably see that as I go forward, my hands actually start to lift off the ground some. Um, and when I, whenever my full planches feel really strong, um, a lot of times I'll actually, be, I'll actually be like up on my fingertips. And it's just because you have to shift your weight so far forward in your full planche because you have so little leverage. If you're feeling strain on your wrists and stuff, uh, that's normal. As you keep training, it'll eventually start to go away. Uh, you'll get stronger. Um, obviously, if it's injuring you, stop doing it. Take a break. Uh, maybe go back to the progression before. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all as far as technique on or form on planches go. All right, just a couple last things. Um, planches, they're not gonna be easy. Uh, a lot of people think that they're just gonna get them right off. It took me, um, I started out working straddle planches. I didn't actually know any progressions when I first started training planches. Uh, I started out straight to straddle, pl or straight to straddle planche. Uh, I didn't negative, I just tried to lift into it over and over again. It took me six months to get a straddle planche. And then after I got my straddle planche, it took me another year and a half to get a full planche. And only just now are my full planches becoming consistent that I can do them pretty much every time without really sacrificing a lot of form. And I'm only just now beginning to work on full planche push-ups. So it's a long, it's a long process. I mean, for most people, it's going to take a, a year, maybe a couple of years to get a full planche. So you can't expect it just to happen right away. If a full planche is something you really want, it's probably going to take you a long time so you really have to work hard for it. Um, that's about it. Uh, if you have questions on anything, just post a comment. I'll answer it. And I guess subscribe for whatever is, comes next. <laughs> Alright, the end.